All right, so for this passage, um, you have questions on the right side that go with the part of the text that is on the screen. Um, so while you are working, uh, make sure that you are highlighting where you find your answers. All right, so the travels of Marco Polo. The famous explorer Marco Polo was born in the year 1253 to a family of merchants. Even then, the city where he was born, Venice, was a center for commerce and trading in the Mediterranean region. Because Marco's family was wealthy, he received a good education, learning about classical authors, the theology of the Latin church, and both French and Italian. He also developed an interest in history and geography that would stay with him for the rest of his life. When Marco was only six years old, his father Niccolo and his uncle Maffeo left for a journey to Cathay, China. By the time they returned, he was 15. When Marco was 17, he accompanied his father and uncle on their second journey to Asia. They had an advantage over other travelers of the time. The emperor Kublai Khan had presented them with a golden tablet a foot long and three inches wide, inscribed with the words, by the strength of the eternal heaven, holy be the Khan's name. Let them that pays him not re reverence be killed. The golden tablet was like a special VIP passport, authorizing the travelers to receive horses, lodging, food, and guides as they required. <clears throat> All right, so first question on this page is, in what city was Marco Polo born? Number two says, why did he receive a good education? Number three says, what advantage did the Polos have while traveling? So looking for a good thing that helped them along. And Marco Polo, uh, number four says, when Marco Polo was 17, where did he begin traveling to? <clears throat> that one you're going to have to use context clues. Look at the sentence before when you find it to see where they're going back to. All right, so answer those questions. Highlight where you found the answers. And then move on to the next page. Feel free to pause. <clears throat> All right. Okay. They had a long and difficult odyssey, mostly on horseback, to reach China. The Polos traveled through Armenia, Persia, and Afghanistan, over the Pamir Mountains, and along the Silk Road, the main travel route for traders. Marco kept detailed journals where he recorded his impressions of the terrain. When he first saw the Great Gobi Desert, more than 500,000 square miles or 805,000 kilometers of sand, he wrote, this desert is reported to be so long that it would take a year to go from end to end. There is nothing at all to eat. The Polo stopped for a year in the Mongol region where they learned about the lives and civilization of the people there. When the Polos reached Cathay to stay with the Emperor Kublai Khan, Marco impressed the ruler with his knowledge of Mongol traditions. The Polos had traveled 5,600 miles, or 9,000 kilometers, in over three and a half years to reach Cathay. Marco had mastered four languages by that time and spent 17 years in the Khan's court learning about trade, industry, and a new paper currency that was much easier to transport than heavy gold or silver. The Chinese had also invented a way of sending messages by which different horsemen passed letters on to one another like a relay race. The Polos told the Khan of their homeland, especially of the Roman church and the Pope, about whom the Khan was curious. All right, so number five says, what great desert did Marco say would take a year to cross? Number six says, whose court did the Polos visit? 
court means like whose royal palace, not like a tennis court. And number seven, what new form of currency did the polos learn about in cafe? All right, so again, make sure you highlight your answers where you find your answers um, and answer those questions. And feel free to pause if you need to. All right, the next part starts with Kublai Khan's palaces were among the most elegant and fantastic structures in the world, with walls covered in gold and silver, a hall so large that 6,000 people could dine at the same time, and a stable of thousands of pure white horses, whose milk the royal family drank. Every room was filled with the finest examples of Asian art, paintings, murals, and sculptures. Most surprising to Marco were the stones that burn like logs. The Khan had found a source of fuel that nobody in Europe could have imagined. It was called coal. <clears throat> in 1293, the Polos began their journey home by ship. The voyage took two years. During that time, Kublai Khan died, although his influence was still powerful and his golden tablet ensured their safety from pirates and bandits. In 1298, Marco captained a galley ship in a battle against Venice's rival city, Genoa, and was captured as a prisoner of war. While he was imprisoned, he met a writer from the city of Pisa who encouraged Marco to write of his travels in Asia. The resulting book, called The Description of the World, or The Travels of Marco Polo, was one of the most popular books in medieval Europe and became a bestseller even though some people thought his stories were too incredible to be true. Marco was released from prison in 1299 and returned to Venice where he married Donata Bador and had three daughters. He lived in Venice until his death in 1324 at the age of 70, a tremendously old man for that time. On his deathbed, he uttered his famous last words, I have written only the half of what I saw. All right, so number eight in our question says, who encouraged Marco to write about his travels? Number nine, what was Marco Polo's book called? And number 10, why did some people not believe Marco's stories? And number 11, what amazing fuel did Marco learn about in cafe? So don't forget to highlight your answers and also where you found your answers. <clears throat> All right, a little bit more. Though many of his stories were incredible, almost unbelievable, the travels of Marco Polo captured the imaginations of centuries of Europeans who had no concept of what Asian culture was like. Marco Polo was an amazing scholar who was open-minded about cultures that were completely different from his own, from uncivilized mountain tribesmen to the most exalted royalty of China. Nowadays, experts and historians are researching Marco's travels. Many of the stories and places which were considered make-believe during his life were later confirmed by 18th century explorers. Though Marco did not speak Chinese and did not discuss many aspects of Chinese culture that we might ex expect, for example, he does not mention the Great Wall, calligraphy, or tea, Chinese historians value his writings as a record of the battles of the 13th century. Marco was also not respected by most geographers during his time. <clears throat> but later, some of his information was used to make maps of the 14th century. He was the first man to create a system for measuring distance traveled by how long it took, and he was the first traveler to record the route across all of Asia, naming kingdom after kingdom. For his achievement, his work is considered the precursor to modern scientific geography. All right, number 12 says, what things made Marco Polo such an amazing explorer? It says, choose all that are true. So you'll have multiple answers. And number 13, 
if you had lived in the 1300s, do you think you would believe Marco Polo's stories? Why or why not? So there's nothing to highlight in the story for that one. You're just going to type your answer and make sure you answer both parts. Do you, would you have believed his stories? And then explain why or why not. When you're done with your work today, please make sure that you hit that turn in button on Google Classroom so that I know that it's done and I can check it.